Okay, in our last program, we were using if statements to make some decisions, but you may have found as you, as you mapped out your program that that was a little bit limiting. One way to offer more control is to do what's called a nested if-else statement. And here's an example of a flowchart of that. Say a customer was looking at a car, and they bought a car, and they were trying to decide whether they wanted to upgrade engines or not. That's a simple decision. Uh, in terms of a computer, it's just going to be a yes or no. If they chose no, uh, that would be like the else, the default, the, the sale would end. But if they chose yes, they might end up in a situation where they have another choice, such as right here, which is to upgrade to a V6 or a turbo with two different price results. So what this means is one decision is nested within another. So let me show you a code example of how that, uh, what that looks like. Okay, here's an example of a nested if statement. Here we're comparing numbers, so don't sweat this. This stands for not equals. And what it's saying is if this condition is true, this condition right is right here, if that's true, then this area in the light gray box uh, is going to perhaps be executed, meaning the first question or the first test it will do is whether x is greater than y. Because it's saying, okay, if two numbers are not equal, is, uh, is one greater than the other or less than the other? So trying to figure that out. So we have this only, we only are presented with these choices if what's in this box evaluates to be true, if this condition is true. Otherwise, we go to our default else and it bypasses everything in there. So let's see how we might update our program from yesterday. And some of you guys have done this already onto how, uh, how we could put this into place. So you can modify your program. I'm going to call this if statement nested. I'm going to go to file save as and give it a new name. That way I still have my old one if I want to come back to that at any point. So I always encourage Good you. Afternoon. Following student, please come down right after. So I'm going to save it with a new name. That way I always have um, my old one if I want. And this way if I make a mistake and I can always come back to it. So the way I'm going to change this is the first question is going to be, do I want to call a run or a pass? And what happens if I choose run, then they're going to be, the user is going to be presented with three run options. And if they chose pass, they'll be presented with three pass options. So I'm going to change this to run and this one to pass. I'm going to make a note to myself. Code. I'll run plays here. And I'm going to do the same for pass. So what I have to do to nest them is put my other if else statements for the run inside here. So they're just going to be inside this closing curly brace. And the pass ones will be inside this closing curly brace. And if you're ever unsure of which brace is which, you can always highlight your brace and hit Control M as in match. Okay, now to do this, if they choose run, I'm going to give them options here. So I had uh, choose sweep. Off tackle or uh, something else. Or up the middle. So those will be my three pass plays. And then for passes, I'm going to put in the bomb, uh, a post, or a quick out, something like that. Give myself a little space. I'm going to compile, make sure I'm good. I'm going to copy these three, excuse me, cut them, and paste them right under here after my message. Now, this is where indentation can help, and sometimes TextPad causes problems. So if you get a strange error like backslash 29, the indents hitting tab sometimes can cause that problem. But I have my outer loop here. I'm going to make these line up so that I have my inner loops, or excuse me, my... Uh, outer if statement and my nested ones.
you can always add comments to closing ones. Like, and the first if. So I know that's my first um, major if statement. The other ones are nested. Okay, so I need to set this equal to input right here. Let's make sure I'm listening. So I'm going to say this one's off tackle. This one up middle. Middle linebacker got us there. And uh, a sweep. Something like that. A uh, loss of two yards. Now the way this works, once again, if they choose run, then we're going to go inside these inner ones, these inner if statements. Uh, first it'll ask this question, and then one of these will execute based on that. And then if, none of, if that first one, if run wasn't chosen, it'll skip all of these and go down to pass. So then we need in the middle there. So I'm going to copy this one, excuse me, cut it. All right, so I know where I am. I'm going to paste this three times. I'm going to add some indents, make it a little easier for me to read. And ultimately, when you run this, you're going to ask the player, uh, user, if they want to run or pass based on what they chose. Then they get uh, three another choice of what they want to run. So I'm going to go with a uh, post. And then knocked the receiver down. Touchdown reception. And my quick out is going to result in a uh, 15 yard gain for first down. All right, the end.